Hi everyone, welcome to the lecture number 19. Now this problem is going to be a pretty simple problem, but I highly recommend that you watch the episode number 18 before this, okay? That will make things much more clear. Now, word search one. So basically we are given a grid, okay? Inside that grid we will have several characters. Several characters basically means that several uh, alphabets, okay? Now we need to find word. We used to solve these kind of puzzles in newspapers, right? We used to find several words in a given crossword. So this is the exact same question, but here we are only given a single word and we need to find that word in the given grid. Okay. So what can we do? We can think in terms of brute force. Okay. In, ter in terms of brute force. So what we can do is we can basically try visiting each of the cells one by one and we will try to see that from where our word starts. So for example, for example, let us say, uh, yeah, let us go to the coding part and let us say this is the given grid. Okay. It is having several uh, characters, several alphabets there. Now we need to find design, D-E-S-I-G-N. Design is the word that we want to figure out. So first of all, I will start my search from D. I will go to the cell which contains D because I want to search design. Okay. So I will go to D. All right. So I will start from 0, 0, this is not D, this is also not D, this M is also not D, H is not also not D, this is D equal to D. Okay. So I will start my search from this point. Okay. Then what I will do is, I will, because I'm able to match the first character, right? Now I will ask recursion to match rest of the characters. From E, S, I, G, N, I will ask recursion to handle it. Okay. And in what all directions I will ask recursion to handle it? Again, in these, in those four directions, because in the question it is given that we can only solve this crossword in the horizontal and the vertical directions. We cannot go diagonally. So that's why uh, we will be going to the horizontal and to the vertical direction. So that basically means that the four directions. So once I spotted the first character that is D, I will ask recursion to handle rest of the task. Basically, so I will ask recursion to go in all these four directions and try to find out E S I G N. Okay, E S I G N. All right. So that's what I will be doing. Now, one more very important thing over here is so I think that we should discuss once we start coding this. Okay. So let us start coding this. Uh, first of all, I will first of all I will create uh, first of all I will go to all these cells one by one i is equal to zero i smaller than n i plus plus for int j is equal to zero j is smaller than m j plus plus going to each of the cell if if bold of i comma j if it is equal to equal to the first character word of zero then only i will start the search from here okay I will start the search from here. I will name this function as search and search I will create as a recursive function. Search. It will take int i, int j, int n, int m, vector of int and the word. Okay. Uh, int m vector of int and the world all right i think this is it <clears throat> okay great now first of all again the same base condition that we should not cross the boundaries so if i becomes negative or or if j becomes negative or or if i becomes n or or j becomes m we are trying to cross the boundary, right? Or, 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 just in case we are not crossing the boundary, we are still on a, um, uh, let's say a valid cell, but the character B O A R D B O A R D of I comma J, this will denote the current character, right? If it is not equal to the required character, not equal to the required character, what's the required character? The required character is, I have to take another integer K. This will denote the required character. So word of K. Okay, it is the required character. All right, so if board of i comma j is not equal to the required character, in all these cases, for, uh, the first four cases are if you are crossing the boundary, uh, then the next case is if the current character, which I am currently standing on, is not equal to the required character, then return and return false. Okay, return false from here. That we are in the wrong direction. Okay, we in this direction, we will not be able to search the world. One reason is we are going out of the boundary. Other reason is the character which we are currently uh, standing right now is not the required character. That's why we are returning false from here. Okay. All right. One more base condition would be if this K 
so this case basically denoting that which character of the word i am currently pointing to okay so if k is equal to equal to word dot size word dot size so in this case i reached till the end of the word basically i discovered the entire word i basically found the entire word so i will return true from here okay k is equal to size basically means that i have found all the characters okay in this word and now i am uh, i am at, i am pointing at word dot size so it will return true from here okay this condition is false the second one this condition is true now what i need to do is so it basically means that if these both of these conditions are not true which it basically means that we are currently standing on the right word okay we are standing on the right word now we need to make exploration in all the four directions all right so option 1 all these options will be boolean bool option 1 will be to search the remaining word to search the remaining word in i plus 1 comma j that means in the downward direction i i plus 1 comma j and comma m comma bold comma word comma k plus 1 right because till k we have already matched okay k plus 1 similarly i will have uh, three other options option 2 option 3 option 4 this will be instead of i plus 1 it will be j plus 1 so j plus 1 basically means that going to the right direction then uh, i minus 1 it means that going to the upward direction then j minus 1 going to the left direction okay so search the remaining part in all of these four directions and if any of these option is true which basically means that if any of this recursive call is able to find the remaining part of the string it basically means that we Uh, found the string right if any of these option are able to find the string the remaining part of the string it basically means that we have the entire word in the grid so we will return the or of these options which basically means that any one any one out of these three sorry four options are able to find the answer that means we have the answer in our grid we have the word in our grid so that's it one more thing that i should basically uh, think of is let's say let's say i'm searching the word dqd okay and dqd i don't know if this kind of word exist or not but for the example we say, we just uh, assume that we are searching dqd we will start with d then we will go to q then we will again come back to d and we will say that yes we are able to figure out we are able to find dqd but dqd is not present okay dq is present ddq is present but dqd is not present because we cannot reuse the same cell again if i want to find dqd i should i will have to reuse the same cell again right but i cannot reuse the same cell again all right so you should not reuse the same cell you should not come back again to the same cell which you have already used in the past so for that either i should take another 2d uh, matrix and i should keep marking that which cells i have already visited and which cells can i visit okay or what i can do is whatever cell i have visited in the past so let us say i have visited the cell i comma j in the past i will i will mark that cell with a hash okay with a hash okay so b o a r d board of i comma j mark it with the hash after marking it with the hash uh we will basically denote that yes this we have already discovered and we do not want to dis rediscover it again right we don't want to go back to this particular cell again okay one more thing i should i should not disturb anything on the board right i should not change the board so i should undo this change but if i want to undo this first of all i need to keep track that what was actually there at this place okay what was that character so board of i comma j we already know what that character was actually that character was equal to word of k right word of k so i should not okay no need to uh, just keep another character what i was actually doing is i was doing like this so i was creating this ch as a temporary character then i would have done this then i would have repasted c here this is what sorry ch over here this is what i would have done okay so i think this should work but instead of that i can simply re uh, i can simply use word of k because word of k is the uh, current character right i can use that as well okay so if search of i comma j comma n comma m comma board comma word 
comma zero. If this search, like if we are able to find this, return true. Okay. Now, even after going to all these cells, if we are not able to find it, if any of the time we are not able to return true, which basically means that I should return false at the end. Okay, let me quickly run this. Yes, it is giving me correct answer. It is a correct solution. Now, talking about the space complexity and the time complexity. First of all, uh, I am running a double for loop here. So I'm going to each of the indices one by one. Okay, each of the indices one by one, which basically makes it n cross m. But inside that also I am calling the search function again and again. Okay, now what's the complexity of this search function? Okay, what's the complexity of this search function? So this search function is basically going in the four direction. So first of all, let us see the uh, height of the tree. The height of the tree would be equal to the length of the word that we are searching. Okay, so every time this k is being incremented by 1, right? This k is become, in being incremented by 1 and it will stop when k reaches word dot size. So the height of the recursion tree will be equal to k dot size, sorry, word dot size. Okay, it will be equal to word dot size. Alright, so yes, the size of the word will be the height of the tree, recursion tree. And then at each level we have four children. We already saw several recursion trees, right? Let us now go to the board. It is very important. So look here, so every time we are going to four directions, okay, from here also again to the four directions, from here also to the four directions, and we've already seen these kind of recursion trees. So one plus four plus 16 and so on, this will be the geometric progression that will be formed, okay. So at this level we have only one node, at this level we have four nodes, at this level we have 16 nodes, at the later on level we have 64 nodes and so on, okay. So this will be a geometric progression where the common ratio is 4. So yeah, and the total height of the tree is equal to k. Let us denote the height of the tree by k. Height of the tree is equal to k. And so there are k number of terms of this geometric progression. If you try to use that formula, right, that formula is basically uh, r raised to the power n minus 1 divided by r minus 1 into a. a is simply 1. a is simply 1 over here. The first term is a is 1. So r is 4 raised to the power k, this n is equal to k, k number of terms, n is equal to k, minus 1 divided by 4 minus 1, that is 3. So 4 raised to the power k roughly, 4 raised to the power k roughly is the number of nodes in the tree. Okay, height of the tree is k, this is space, number of nodes, 4 raised to the power k, time, time complexity of this recursive function. Now how many times we are calling this recursive function? m cross n number of times, okay m cross n number of times in the worst case m cross n number of times so m cross n multi m cross n multiplied by 4 raised to the power k this is the overall time complexity it is very huge okay it's very huge so this is the time complexity this is the space complexity i hope you are able to understand that how does this recursion work it is same as the previous problem the previous one the flood field algorithm you can go and revisit it again try to solve both these questions by yourself these were the grid questions okay these are very important although these were the graph questions but i uh, thought that we should cover them in the recursion itself because these are very recursive in nature and these are simple as well all right let us meet in the next episode bye bye take care make sure to like the video make sure to subscribe to the channel if you are new here i hope you are understanding everything bye bye